welcome. Thanks to all of you that have joined us live or watching one of our recordings. We're so grateful that you're here tuned in to the national broadcast, the only national broadcast for the nonprofit sector, the nonprofit show. And we have back with us today, Jennifer Oliva, which is a CPA. She is a CPA and managing partner at your part-time controller. And Jennifer, you're going to talk to us about getting ready for the new year. And that new year we're talking about is 22. I cannot believe it. Around so, the corner. <laughs> it is around the corner. And uh, we have, you know, a lot to share with you today. Thank you to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, for having this two-week journey <laughs> uh, mapped out two years ago. And we're still going strong, and we are looking ourselves into next year. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, and we are also so extremely grateful to have the support from our presenting sponsors, your part-time controller and Jennifer being one of those. We are so grateful for these corporate sponsors, these investments in these episodes and truly the sector at large because these companies, these individuals, these leaders continue to demonstrate the investment into the sector at large we are so grateful to have their continued support so we can have a conversation with Jennifer and so many others each and every weekday to talk about how you can prepare for 2022. Jennifer, welcome back and thank you for saying yes. Uh, thank you guys for having me again. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be on the nonprofit show as well as be a sponsor. Uh, we are really happy to be part of the whole programming, the whole program that you're doing, and your whole mission to bring uh, more information to nonprofits every single day that they need uh, and can use. It's practical right away in their work. Thank you. That is what you just said is exactly what Jarrett and I um, really formulated this Two years ago. I mean, we really said this is what we want to be doing. And um, it's really exciting that you have shared that vision with us and, and um, our part, such a, a big part. And, and I have to give a shout out to your team because, you know, you get to come on and look great and be smart and fun, but you have a great team behind you that does a lot of work to get this all ready. We really do. We have an amazing team, our marketing group, Erica Blair, I need to give Erica a shout out, and our strategic partnerships manager, Geraldine Dressler, who I know you guys know very well, very well. Um, uh, you to all the in, uh, great team members that we have at your part-time controller that have been guests yeah. and uh, about various subjects that they are um, you know, certainly subject matter experts in. So Yeah, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. But the truth of it is, is that we are at the cusp of a new year and it's been a hell of a year. We thought that it would be a lot easier maybe than it was, but we are moving into 2022. If you joined us for the Chitty Chat Chat, we were talking briefly about that. So we thought maybe we could ask you about the lessons. So it's, it's what, we can, what can we take and help us move forward in a positive and empowered way? That's a heavy lift. <laughs> That's a question for the ages. <laughs> but, you know, we, we did think, you know, coming out of 2020 with the dawn of the, the vaccination uh, vaccines, we were going to be like, oh, 2021 is going to be the year. It's Everything's going to be so much better than the terrible 2020 year that we had. Um, but we still had a lot of challenges in 2021. We had the Delta variant uh, come and hit us right after all the vaccinations came out and people started to get vaccinated and things started to go back to normal. Then we had Delta. And then we had to realign our strategies and our plans uh, at that time. So flexibility, resiliency, all of those words that we were using in 2020 were still um, a thing for 2021 and will continue to be uh, for sure. And when I think about that and think about you know, uh, flexibility, what, you know, from an accounting standpoint, from a finance standpoint, from even just a just general planning standpoint from an organization, uh, I think of scenario planning. Uh, the flexibility that you need, you're going to have to put down on paper and say, you know, what what happens if this, if, if we have more funding? What happens if we have less funding? What if we have to dip into our reserves? We have to have that 
in a written plan uh, with different scenarios in different, you know, both from a long-term outlook, maybe a year, two years out, and even a short-term outlook, looking at like uh, this particular month, are we going to have enough to, to make payroll because this thing, uh, this funding source went down significantly uh, in a very short term. So we always preach to our clients, have long-term and short-term plans that you can update regularly and communicate to your board and to your staff. Um, sure. And that helps you shift uh, uh, and helps you communicate any shifts in strategy that you might have to have along the way. Uh, Jennifer, I was going to add that that is such the reality. I have heard it all too often with organizations and CEOs saying, we really do need to look at this scenario planning. And I had shared with you, one of my clients has almost tripled in operating budget. They've really just seen an influx in financial resources, which has been wonderful. And I worry about the continued sustainability and scalability for this particular agency. And to have the opposite spectrum where literally six months prior, it was, are we going to make payroll? And that is truly the pendulum. It is swinging both directions pretty severe for so many organizations. Yeah, and I would say, you know, this shifting strategy, you're gonna have to shift your strategies, especially as it relates to revenue sources. Uh, because you might be, as you said, Jared, uh, we might be, um, coming off of a year that we received a ton of uh, uh, pandemic-related funding, uh, maybe we got PPP loans or ERC, the em um, Employee Retention Credit, or if we were performing arts organization, got the um, Shuttered Venue Grant. And now, well, and many organizations had a lot more donations because the general public said, oh, we really need to support these organizations more in this terrible crisis. And now we have to plan for, okay, we had all of this potentially extra funding, and now what do we do about that uh, when that funding decreases? And you know, some of our clients are looking really for um, different funding strategies, different funding sources, ways to raise money. We have this one client, um, they're called uh, Ballet X. They are one of the premier ballets in the world, and they're actually here in Philadelphia near me. And they went to a subscription model of uh, during the pandemic, they couldn't perform and rate and and have their incoming performance revenue. So they went to a, they started taping all of their shows in outdoor locations and then have subscribers uh, pay to view their material and uh, their performances. So I think that is one example of an excellent. Um, change and shift that uh, many organizations made throughout the pandemic. Um, we have seen so much innovation and I feel like it continues. And to have that unbridled creativity has really been awe inspiring to watch. I'm curious, Jennifer, if you can tell us a little bit about what we might see on the horizon when it comes to new trends. And I'm curious how you and your national team have seen this and, um, you know, really, as we as we are starting to wrap up, as I keep referring to it as the final miles of the marathon, yeah. <laughs> what do we look for for the start line of next year? Uh, you know, I look at um, things that are continually in the news that we have to really pay attention to, uh, you know, certainly be prepared to change on a dime. We have Omicron uh, as a potential risk for uh, for people right now. And that's going to affect, are we coming, if we had plans to come back and bring people back into the office, are we going to be able to do that? Uh, are we going to be able to have our in-person events that we had planned to have, or do we have to have some kind of hybrid mix of events? And that goes back to that flexibility, that need that is not going to change uh, in uh, 2022. We're going to be able to have to turn on a dime uh, for these changes and these new variants that might come up, unfortunately. Um, also inflation, 
uh, you, you, we keep hearing about inflation, the Fed tightening uh, that is um, pretty much in the cards. Uh, if you, you know, read any of the business pages or watch any of the business shows uh, that uh, interest rates are going to rise, how is that going to affect your donors? Um, are, are they going to um, uh, not have enough disposable income or have less disposable income to give? And how are we going to reach organizations? Uh, reach donors in that way. Foundations are gonna have different uh, investment strategies as it relates to inflation and also um, the Fed you know, changing in interest rates. And then the way nonprofits spend, uh, we might have uh, less money, less, uh, or the, the prices may be going up for our rent and all the supplies and certainly the big number, which is uh, salaries. And we have to be prepared for that uh, in the future. And that really, that salary increase goes into the next in big trend that's happening now, but that will continue in 2022, which I call the, instead of the great resignation, we're calling the great reevaluation. Uh, people have, you know, looked at their work life during the pandemic and said, is this all worth it? Are it's what I'm doing meaningful and fulfilling. And also, uh, you know, with all of these of, of the available opportunities, there's just less people in the workforce. Am I going to get paid more, have a better experience somewhere else? So the important thing, and I think it's a really op big opportunity for nonprofits if people are reevaluate reevaluating their values and what they want to do with their work hours. Nonprofits have a great opportunity to connect people that really want to work in a mission-based organization uh, and what their mission is, try to find those people that are interested in their mission to work for them. Um, but really, we have to invest in people in 2022. We have to um, really make our places a best place to work. Uh, we have to continue to build our culture, be a place where people want to be, provide leadership uh, opportunities for our staff and really, really focus on retention of our teams. You know, uh, I agree with you. And, and it's, I just read an article in the Wall Street Journal probably within the last three days and it was about the great resignation, but I love the great reevaluation. <laughs> and it said, if you think it's bad now, wait until about January 15th, because a lot of people want to end the year so they get their bonuses and then when they're redoing their like personal goals and everything a lot of times a job change factors into that and so then the push is okay now I'm going to start working on this in January so we think it's tough now but there could be this another wave of to your point Jennifer people that are like is this all there is in my life I need to connect yeah. with something that's more meaningful well, I know, you know, for us at your part-time controller, we're always looking for ways to make um, work-life um, balance better, um, mm -hmm. but also ways to connect with our staff because we are a mission-based organization. I mean, we are a for-profit company. We, we, yeah, we do sure, accounting sure. for nonprofits, but because we have that connection to nonprofits, um, we are able to draw um, accountants that really want to have... Um, meaning and value in the work that they do every day as accountants. And we love accounting too. Don't get me wrong. We love to do the numbers, but having that meaning and supporting missions is super important. But I also think relationship building uh, is uh, key. And I think something we're also focusing on, um, building relationships and um, uh, maintaining those strong relationships with staff is going to be really, really important. Having those stay interviews, um, mm -hmm. having social gatherings, um, being transparent about what's happening in the organization, communicating, uh, you know, just making uh, staff feel valued overall is going to be important. Yeah. Um, you know, listening yeah. to you talk about this and, uh, and maybe other uh, viewers, their, their brains are thinking, this sounds more like HR. What does this have to do with our finances, right? <laughs> and it's really so intertwined as to retaining, as I like to call our rock star talent 
and how that affects our bottom line, how it affects our mission, how it affects the impact that we're able to achieve, you know, throughout our communities. And I love, 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 Jennifer, that you said those stay interviews, because we've heard that before. Yeah, It's not that exit interview. It's really talking yeah. to your rock star staff and having a stay interview to really acquire from them what is it that you love with your job? How can we, you know, make your, your job environment systems processes a little bit more efficient to help you achieve your goals here, you know, within the role of the organization. So I love hearing that your part-time controller is doing that. Yeah. And employee surveys, so important. And then acting on them. Uh, so, you know, if we can, if I can, you know, let people know what we're doing as a firm and we um, that we feel is successful and share that information. That's part of our mission of what we do at your part-time controller. So good. Yeah, so good. What about, you know, you mentioned COVID strategies. We mentioned, yeah. you know, also navigating through Delta variant and now the Omicron variant. Uh, and so what are some of these continued COVID strategies that we might want to keep our finger on the pulse, you know, because it's still very much a thought process as we move forward. And I'm thinking, you know, three to five long-term, you know, years looking at these long-term goals, we still need to have this in our conversation. Yeah. Um, so having all this continued uncertainty uh, with COVID still lurking out there, I think, you know, first and foremost, and, you know, this is a, a financial, you know, conversation, but it's also important to, you know, think about um, uh, what we're doing with our staff, again, you know, keeping them staff, keeping them safe, you know, should we be together? Um, should we not? That's also going to affect your um, financial um, uh, future too, because are we going to need uh, space for to bring to bring our staff back? Are we going to need to send staff computers and technology to uh, help them uh, work from home better, especially if we're hiring new staff? Um, that was definitely a trend in 2021. A lot of uh, setting up of home offices that will continue to be in 2022 and still will have to be flexible about it depending on the, the different variances. And that being prepared to change, having that plan B, uh, having those scenarios. Um, and then um, also continuing to go digital uh, to uh, all of your information should be easily accessible by those that need it. And we, we refer to that as our digital nervous system. All of the different systems that you um, have that will give you the important information that your organization and those in it need to run your business. And uh, we are having, okay, I'm going to pitch a webinar that we just did uh, in November. And I think you guys are going to love the name. It was called Let's Get Digital. Um, you know, so, you know, you know, that song. That's, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in that webinar, and, uh, and you can see it, you can get it on our website. Uh, we talked all about, you know, all the different electronic systems that are in play right now, including electronic um, or uh, cloud-based accounting systems, uh, electronic bill pay system, electronic expense reporting, uh, how, electronic uh, invoicing, and then the how you can group all of that information from all of those various sources in from your digital nervous system into dashboards and other summaries that are going to give you a bird's eye view of your key performance indicators and what you need to manage, or, or those things that you need to manage on a regular, daily, weekly, monthly basis. And to get that information to all the key people in your organizations and your board that need to see it regularly. Yeah. Timely, relevant, all of the key performance indicators, the KPIs, so yeah. important. Um, I'm curious, and this is definitely a curveball. I wanted okay. to ask it, <laughs> uh -oh. ask it with the, the new trends question, but it also, I think we have seen due to COVID, due to a lot of the changes, 
an increase in giving by way of cryptocurrency. Mm. And I know for Giving Tuesday, there was a huge dollar amount raised through crypto. And again, I, I'm coupling these together because perhaps it's a new trend and perhaps it's a new trend because of COVID and mm -hmm. part of these strategies of giving and reaching, you know, um, givers in different markets. How has your part-time controller approached this topic? Yeah, good it's, a good, it's a great question good and not question. necessarily a curveball because we've okay. been talking about it at your part-time controller for a while and we've been, yes. um, you know, we're certainly not cryptocurrency experts where we don't necessarily endorse, you know, investments in cryptocurrency. It's really still very speculative, um, but uh, we're seeing more of a um, trend in donors giving cryptocurrency to nonprofits. And so our recommendation is that you have a cryptocurrency acceptance policy, just like you have any other gift acceptance policy. And our recommendation is that you divest immediately, just like you would divest in, in, in some stock because it is speculative. Uh, and you want to make sure that you are um, not you know, going to have to deal with the ups and downs of uh, crypto. I mean, even Bitcoin this past week went, you know, really down and then okay. back up yeah. and it's going to continue to be extremely volatile. So uh, we have two organizations that uh, organizations can look to, to get more information about gifts of cryptocurrency and how they can convert them into cash regular, you know, pretty quickly is uh, the giving block and also uh, every.org. So those are two orgs that are uh, companies that we've been speaking to about how nonprofits can, and I'm sure there, there's many others out there, uh, how nonprofits can convert that crypto into cash pretty quickly. We've had the right. giving block, uh, one of the giving oh, okay. block founders on. Yeah. Okay. Great. And I, I agree with you. I love that you started out with, you need to have a policy. Yes. I think that's absolutely stellar, stellar advice, because you're right. Um, get in, get out, just like you would stocks and bonds, real estate. I mean, you know, you're not a holding company. Yes. No. Yeah. No, you're not a holding company. Yes. Yeah. You, you, don't want to, you don't want to have that volatility in any kind of nonprofit oh, yeah. uh, portfolio. Yeah. Uh, that would just be too risky for your donor's money, in, in our opinion. Well, thank you for addressing that, because that is something that's been you know, stirring around in my mind again, I, I know that I saw a huge increase of that. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the giving block with <laughs> cryptocurrency for giving Tuesday. Yeah. And I just feel it's here to stay at some yeah. level, you know, and yeah. whether it's a trend or it's because of COVID really considering that as part of our conversation, yeah. I think it's something, you know, really important. You've yeah. given us so much to think about. And I know that many of us, again, you know, Julie and I have talked about this before. We cannot believe that it is almost mid-December. And so talking about the end of the year, and again, that the finish line is near, yeah. but that start line for 22 is literally right around the corner. I mean, I, I can see it, right? <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> You know, I would say, you know, fundraising strategies too, we haven't had to, a chance to discuss, it, are going to be really important for nonprofits in 2022. Uh, digitally based fundraising strategies, uh, use of mobile phones for yeah. fundraising, use of um, QR codes, of uh, artificial intelligence, all of those are going to be trends in continued trends in 2022 because um, many nonprofits are already using, but many nonprofits are slow to adapt uh, to these uh, to these upcoming trends. So um, can I pitch another uh, something from your part-time controller? So yeah, yeah. an upcoming Mission <laughs> Business podcast okay, <laughs> with yeah. Kimberly O'Donnell. She's a vice president um, at the at Network for Good. And uh, she talks all about these, uh, these trends and how nonprofits can use uh, digital sources, um, phones, AI, uh, all of these new trends to raise more money. And uh, she's a big proponent of all nonprofits getting on board to uh, newer fundraising strategies. So. Good, good. Yeah, I think that that's one of those things. I mean, Jared, in the very beginning um, of, of the nonprofit show, 
uh, back way back when said, you know, our sectors do for a major shakeup. We have not been forced to reconcile some of these new technologies that everybody else is doing. And so it's really going to impact how we work with our donors and, and obviously our clients as well, those who we serve. So I agree with you. I think this is an, an excellent um, time for us to reevaluate what's out there and what we can be doing um, because it is the future. It, it, we're missing it. out. And those that are not going to jump on board are going to miss out. And yeah. we hope that uh, we can help uh, our clients and others and educate with you know our podcast, our mission business podcast, mission business podcasts, our webinars about these trends and developments uh, that nonprofits need to know, just like you guys do every single day. So I, I appreciate our partnership in that way. It's great. Hey, I've got another question. And this actually has come into um, one of our Ask and Ad Answered episodes. And I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Okay. Um, we've had this question before, and I'm wondering what your part-time controller is seeing. And that revolves around the issue of stipends or funding for people. And you mentioned it earlier um, to have some sort of uh, fund that helps them get their work from home space, oh. technology, you know, mm -hmm. pivoted to where they can work. Mm -hmm. um, being that 2022 is still going to see us working from home and many people want to work from home. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering kind of like what it is you're seeing that maybe you could give us some some guidelines on that. Definitely see a trend towards technology uh, support or giving computers to okay. uh, staff members to work from home. I think it's really important from a cybersecurity uh, standpoint as well, you know, protecting your donor data and your staff data uh, that you're not just uh, staff aren't just using their regular home computers that their kids are using for homework and such. Yeah. Um, so having dedicated uh, uh, hardware for them. And then we're definitely seeing a trend of stipends, uh, nonprofits and others, uh, uh, and we do it at your part-time controller, provide an annual stipend for those things that um, staff need for anything from home, what be it paper, be it a ch new chair, new lighting, um, so I think it's definitely important for um, nonprofits to evaluate um, the importance of that because that also can relate to the retention of yeah. your staff, making them happy and comfortable in the work that they do. And, I, and, and not to take away just like the, um, uh, the heavy mental toll that work from home and um, the whole pandemic has, has you know, really weighed on everyone. So uh, important to focus on that too. And just having the right materials for working is just one step in that right direction. Right, right. Great insight. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Again, you know, you have been along with Julie and I on this journey for the last two weeks, <clears throat> two years, really. <laughs> And it's just been such a joy to have you and your team at your part-time time controller be a part of this. I have been privileged to see some of your professionals at work um, in the community doing the great work of your part-time controller. And I'm so grateful to know that these experts exist and they're right here, you know, in my community and they're, they're across the nation. So make sure you yep. do reach out to Jennifer, yep. if you're interested, uh, Jennifer serves as the managing partner for your part-time controller and phenomenal to work with. So thank you again for sharing your valuable time and expertise with us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. It's always fun to be with both of you. So thank Thanks. You. It's a lot of fun. And I think um, one of the things is you make things uh, more concrete, less frightening, more structured. And I love how you're able to weave in things that impact finance um, and revenue and the process of accounting, but that really dovetail to all those other things like our donors, our clients, our staff, the HR components. And so that's what I think is really valuable uh, when we get to talk to you because it certainly is more holistic. And um, as Jarrett said, you've been part of our go-to team from the get-go. So we are very, very, very honored that you would share with us. Again, we wanna thank all of our sponsors who are here with us day in and day out as we finish up this year strong with a lot of exciting opportunities coming in the new year. 
and probably some big challenges as well. Um, the nonprofit sector does that best. So I think it's a, it's a great marriage. Hey, again, wow, Jarrett, lots to think about, lots of great ideas. Super, super exciting to have this discussion. Yeah, I took some notes and I know that <laughs> I am going to watch this episode again because I am already seeing how this takes uh, root yeah. into the yeah. next 12 months. So thank you. It's been, it's been great. Thanks to all of you that have joined us today, whether live or on a recording, you can see this episode many more times, as many times as you wish, um, as well as all of our other almost 450 episodes now. So again, thank you for joining us here today. Come back tomorrow. We have another um, wonderful show set up for you and everyone tomorrow. And we always end the show by asking you to please stay well so you can do well. Thanks so much, Jennifer.